This is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio, and I wanted to create this video to explain some of the options and preferences that we have with our ortho module. And what I'm talking about here is the preferences accessible from the tools dropdown that we have for orthodontics and tooth movement limits. The orthodontics module in Blue Sky Plan has become extremely robust and powerful, enabling the user to do the digital tooth setup create the models for liner fabrication, design the actual liners directly in the Blue Sky Plan software, automatically trim models that are created using a thermoform. And of course, we have the IBT indirect bonding tray functionality, the ability to do the bracket setup aligned to wire, aligned to brackets. And we're continuing to expand that bracket library and we do invite bracket manufacturers to include their parts into Blue Sky Plan. They're not exportable from the software, they're just used for the IBT design. With all the capabilities and automation that we do have in the software, we have the preferences set up in the back of Blue Sky Plan. And understanding the different fields here and their different capabilities can help you design your models and aligners and your indirect bonding trays exactly the way you want them. Now it's perfectly fine to use the defaults that we have in the software, but the purpose of this video is that if you do want to make changes, you can understand how to do so. So the first settings that we have here is dental notation. By default, it's set to the United States, dental notation, tooth numbering. You have the ability to change that to the European numbering system, and you have generated models quality. These are the models for thermoform aligners. You could keep it on normal, if you do want to increase the resolution, which would increase the size of the exported files, you could change it to high and very high. It would increase the resolution and the quality of the export, but normal is perfectly fine. So the first setting that we're going to take a look at is our closed model height. The default is 20 millimeters. In our case, here I have marked two dots on each tooth. I have marked the missing teeth with the blue dot in the middle of the curve. I have the visualization for collisions currently visible. And what I'm able to do is close the model. The 20 millimeters that we saw there is the total model height from the top of the model down to the base. So when I click close model is going to generate a model 20 millimeters in height. Now this is great if you're going to be printing or saving or storing the models for future use, the actual models, and you want them to be a particular height. If you're going to be trimming the models later, which is going to reduce the height and remove unnecessary parts of the model, then this number of 20 millimeters isn't that relevant because it's going to change later when we go ahead and trim and clean up the models. So the closed model height is the total height from the cusps of the teeth to the bottom of the models. And again, it's not as relevant if you're going to be trimming and clean, cleaning up the model in the next uh, step or two. So if we switch back to our software case, we could see that the model has now been closed. And if we measure the height of the model, we should get a solid 20 millimeters. So after we place two dots on each teeth, the software runs the automatic segmentation and we get our segmented teeth. In the next step, our trim model step, the software is placing a trim curve according to the option that we have right here. So we have our gingiva trim margin, which is set by default to be two millimeters. And what this means is that the software is creating a trim curve to be two millimeters below the gingiva margin. Now, if we go ahead and we actually change that setting, we could change it to be closer or farther from the gingiva margin. And if we make the change and click reset trimming curve, then we could see how the software moved to the trim curve closer to the gingiva margin. Now, we could go ahead and review the curve, and if we need to modify it at all, we could go ahead and modify it. But what we're going to see is that the setting that we have for gingiva trim margin, plus the setting that we have for the model height below the mandible or the maxilla after trimming is going to be our model height below the gingiva curve. So with these settings, we're gonna have the three millimeters of model below the gingiva curve. If we wanna make our model as 
short or as thin as possible, then we could reduce these settings to let's say a millimeter and a millimeter each that will give us two millimeters below the gingival margin. The closer our curve is to the actual gingival margin, the more fine tuning it might need. If it's two millimeters below, according to the defaults, then you probably won't need to make any modifications. But if you do want it to be closer, you can also move it actually closer manually. But if you want the software to place it closer, then enter the one millimeters and just go ahead and review the curve. We could click the button for our opposing jaw. We could review the settings here as well. Now, if we wanted to keep that 20 millimeter total height that we saw previously, we would check the box for don't trim mandible and or don't trim maxilla. Because once it goes ahead and does the trimming, what it, the software does is it removes, number one, everything that's outside of the curve. So parts of the model that's irrelevant is going to be cut away automatically, but it also changes the total model height. Instead of being the setting that we had earlier of the 20 millimeters, it's going to take our gingiva margin and it's going to add the one, two or three millimeters that we just saw. So when I click now, continue to teeth moving, we're seeing that the software is automatically reducing the model height based on those settings. And what the software does in fact, is it takes the lowest point of the new margin of the new model and it uses that as the low point and it creates a flat plane on the bottom of the model for that. And we could actually see here on the model the difference between our trim curve, which we could see, and the more straight part of the model underneath that, which is the setting that we have for the model height below the trimming. So we can now see that we have the model with the reduced height that was created based on the trim curve and the allowed area below the trim curve. The next setting that I want to take a look at is our pivot offsets. So the stage that we're at in the software allows the user to create a digital tooth setup to move and rotate the teeth using the widget. Now the widget isn't positioned to be in the center of the tooth, rather it's placed to be below the tooth, closer to the roots, so that when you use the tip functionality and you grab the widget and you tip the tooth, you are pivoting it based on a point that's below the tooth. So that's the settings that we have here for the pivot offsets. If for whatever reason you want the widget to be placed initially higher or lower, then you could go ahead and change these offsets. The next setting, the maximum allowed IPR, we have different settings for the anterior and posterior teeth. But what this does is that when you use the snap to curve functionality to create an automatic digital tooth setup by the software, what is an acceptable amount of IPR? So we could see that we have this snap to curve curve that could be moved higher or lower to visually improve, or you could grab the green nodes to fine tune the placement of that curve. But when you click snap all teeth, the software will reposition the teeth to create a digital tooth setup according to the curve, the snap to curve curve, and according to the maximum allowed IPR that we see here in options. Let's switch for a second to tooth movement limits because sequentially in our process flow, this is relevant next. What we have here is for each jaw and for each tooth, the maximum allowed movement from model to model or step to step or liner to liner. If you wanted the software to move the teeth more aggressively from step to step, then you could go ahead and change and increase the values here. If you want the software to allow less movement from step to step, model to model, aligner to aligner, then you could go ahead and decrease the settings here. Now the tooth movement limits are for a monthly time frame. So when the software is calculating the models, it's going to assume a monthly time frame and movements based on that. If you choose bi-weekly or weekly, the software is automatically going to create the models either with bi-weekly would be half the default settings or weekly would be a quarter of the default settings with it create an increased number of models or aligners based on half the allowed movement or a quarter of the allowed movement based on that selection. So for most aggressive movements, leave the setting at monthly 
And you could go ahead if you like and increase the default settings in order to have increased movements or decreased movements. The next group of settings that we're going to take a look at is the models export. And that's in a situation where you're exporting models to create thermal form aligners. So first of all, you have the checkboxes to create hollow models. So a hollow model will make the internal side of the model hollow to increase the amount of printing material needed and the amount of printing time it takes to print. So it's generally recommended to generate the models as hollow models. You also have the option of generating a cross pattern, which instead of the bottom of the model being completely hollow, the bottom surface of the model will have a cross pattern shape to it. So this is what our model will look like when we export it hollow with the cross grid. If we turn off the generate cross pattern setting as I have here, and we'll still get our hollow model, and it won't have that cross pattern on it. We'll just have the envelope or the outside of the model. And the thickness of the hollow model is what we have here. It's set to three millimeters by default which means this outside perimeter will be at least three millimeters thick. Okay, the labeled text and numbering is actually something I should have mentioned prior to the export, but we have an option for separately or one line, and it applies to this. So if I click, if I have it set separately, I click OK. Now I enter a label text, which could be any free text patient, patient identifier that I want to enter, click Show Label, so here I see the label text on the screen. It could be embossed or engraved onto my model. And the software automatically adds the number of the model to the label. So if I want the text and identifier showing up in two lines like I have now, then I have the correct settings. If I want to go ahead and change that so that they're showing up on one line, the text and the numbering, then I could go ahead and switch it to one line. And as we see here, it has it automatically. If I just want to have the model number, by the way, I could just have no text, click show label, and it will show just the model number. And I can choose to emboss that anywhere I want or engrave it anywhere I want. And that's how that setting works. The next settings that we're going to take a look at is this big section that we have here for aligners. Now, if I close this, after we did the, tooth, the digital tooth setup and we've created our steps, we have options on the bottom of how we want to proceed. So for exporting models in order to create a thermal form aligner, we could just click export models only and click continue to export. If we're doing the same, but we want to add the buttons for added traction and grip, we could click, click add buttons. The software will take us to the next step where we could go ahead and add those buttons. However, we have two other options here. We have an option of design printable aligners, and that's in a situation when we're going to be able to print aligners directly, we could design the digital aligners in the software for export. And we have the option to design a liner trim curve, which means that if you're going to have a milling machine automatically trim those thermal form aligners, then you need to pass instructions to the milling machine to create a curve along which the milling machine should trim those aligners. So if you click design aligner trim curve, the software is going to take you to a process that we'll take a look at in a minute, where the software will generate a series of points along a curve. The milling machine will input that information and will automatically use the milling machine to trim those aligners. So if I click to continue design aligner trim curve, then we could see that the software has automatically added for us the trim curve. And we could go ahead and grab any of these nodes and fine tune the placement if we like. The settings that we have here, let's take a look at, and then we'll talk about the settings in the settings. So obviously we have clear curve. We could create either a continuous or a scalloped curve. And we could also define the trim margin, which is the distance be below the gingival curve where the trim curve is created. We also have the option to show a locator. Now the milling machine will probably require the models to be created with a locator attached to them so they could be properly positioned in the milling machine. And if you are going to be creating this trim curve and automatically using the mill to trim the liners, you need to take this into consideration um, in the preferences and the settings that we had 
previously. So if your locator has a height of three or four millimeters, then you wanna make sure that you're creating four or five millimeters below your gingiva curve. So if this is a technique you're gonna be using regularly, then your model trimming uh, settings should be higher. So here we have the ability to create our trim curve and we have the ability to show or hide the locator. So if we open up our preferences, we have our curve shape. By default, should it be continuous or scalloped when you get to that step? What should your default aligner trim margin be? Our aligner offset and our aligner thickness are for situations where you're going to be able to print the aligner directly. The offset is going to be a separation between the model and the aligner, just like if you're familiar with the surgical guide, we have an offset between the model and the surgical guide to be placed on and off. Here, the liner offset is the same, and the liner thickness is the thickness of the liner itself. So these two settings are unique to cases where you're going to be printing the, printing the actual liners. Now, the liner trim margin applies there as well because it creates the distance below the gingival margin to which the liner is going to reach. Now, the next settings that we have are for the file the software generates for the milling machine to mill and automatically trim the models. So the file delimiter is just how the which is just how the point coordinates are going to be separated. By default, it's comma, it could be space. Okay, this is again if you're going to use the milling machine to trim the liners. The curve file extension is the dot end of the file. So for a blue sky plan file, stop BSB. For a Word file, Microsoft Word might be dot uh, doc or whatever it is. So here by default, it's X, Y, Z. You could change it to custom and you could put in whatever value you want to work with your milling system. Now you have exported curve point spacing is the distance between the points. The software creates the curve and creates the coordinates to transfer to the milling machine. Here it's creating a point every half a millimeter, and that's the spacing of the points to be transferred to the milling machine in the exported file. So these last three settings are regarding a generation of the coordinate file that the software is going to be exporting and transferring to the milling machine. The final ortho settings that we haven't reviewed yet are for the indirect bonding tray. So the software could create the indirect bonding tray for you click ortho indirect bonding tray. Here we have two options to either align the brackets to the teeth with the existing tooth setup or align brackets to wire where you do the digital tooth setup and the software aligns the brackets to the wire. So I loaded this model, I clicked add all brackets, I added the brackets and we could see the brackets have been placed to be as flush on the tooth as possible. This is aligned to teeth functionality and if we zoom in, we could see there's a very slight separation between the bracket and the tooth. If we pull up our final settings and we go to our indirect bonding tray settings, now we could take a look at these. Bracket tooth spacer is the space between the bracket and the tooth, the space for an adhesive or cement. So there is a very small space there as we saw. There is the transfer tray offset. Again, we spoke about this offset for aligners and exists for surgical guides as well. There needs to be a slight, slight separation between the teeth with the brackets and the indirect bonding tray. So it could be inserted and removed. So that's set to be a default of 0.2. And our transfer tray thickness, by default, the IBT will have a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. That's thick enough to properly insert the brackets, but to be slightly flexible to allow it to be placed onto the teeth and to be removed effectively.